everybody. Welcome to Three Dirty Little Pricing Secrets Your Competition Doesn't Want You to Know with Angela and Marley. If somebody could just put it in the um, question part, if you can hear this part. And if Miss Angela will unmute herself, we are going to get ready and start. Okie dokie. Awesome. Okay. And we are, let's just make sure we are recording. Awesome. Sounds great. Okay. So three dirty little pricing secrets your competition doesn't want you to know. Welcome everybody. I'm Marley Major and Miss Angela. Say hey. Hey, how's everyone doing? Well, this is something that Angela and I love to do. And uh, obviously because we've been doing it now like every month. And so hopefully this is going to be our best webinar ever. I'm feeling it. Angela, I'm feeling it. So hopefully you are as well. So let's yeah. jump in because as always, we have a lot more than we can possibly cover in an hour. Okay, so how to stop cutting your prices without spending a ton of time. So our goals for you in this webinar are pretty much to get you off the hamster wheel give you energy so you don't feel run down and depressed like feeding your business because i don't know about you but many times i have felt like it was like that wood burning stove and all i was doing was just throwing like more wood more wood more wood onto the stove and then i was like wait a second like this is not working all i'm doing is just literally spinning my wheels and that's why i say it, get the hamster off the wheel and the third thing is just like take the time, take a deep breath to organize yourself so that you feel great about the business you're building and the lifestyle you're creating so that you're not getting yourself into the situation like I've been in and so many people have been in, which is you start building this business and then you're like, oh my God, how did I get here? So the one thing that's important is if you stay until the end, and uh, I wanna emphasize this because we, we had people uh, on before that didn't realize we were going to get all these good bonuses but i just want to remind you that you want to stay till the end for sure because we're going to give you all kinds of um good reasons to do so let's just say so let's talk about what makes this different because i think what angela and i do is really different from the other stuff that's out there and angela why don't you jump in and tell us why why you think it's different and why what you present is different than what everybody else you know all these other business people out there who are presenting stuff well i teach and learn from my experiences and i share my experiences so my background being in psychology and working in a morgue in a mental health facility and then i'm a certified communication trained facilitator so working in a mental health setting and a healthcare setting, I really learned how to be patient and how to further communicate with people. And then I'm a productivity queen. I, I hate paper. And so we remain paperless in our office and we make sure that all of our clients follow the same process. I love it. Well, and I love that you, um, that you say that you hate paper because on so many I'd like I, I hate business kind of paper but like I love touching good paper so you can hate paper and still be on the call with Angela right so. absolutely most of my coaching clients have paper everywhere and they're like you're gonna die when you see my office but I'm there to help them get out of the paper mess <laughs> right well yeah it's, it's when it's good paper that that's when it works well I think what makes this different from my perspective is that, uh, and this is sort of my secret sauce, and I think with like private clients, why we connect with the private clients that we do is that, you know, both of us are smart girls, but I, I mean, I got my business degree from Georgetown, which is one of the top, you know, universities literally in the world. And you would think that after a business degree from Georgetown, I would have a freaking clue how to run a business. Uh, considering I started my first real, real business, you know, when I graduated from, from college and I was 21 years old, but I didn't and I still blew it. And even though my first business I was in the restaurant business, I 
got it to a million dollars in sales, I was focused on the wrong thing because it was all I cared about was the sales number instead of, hey, who cares how much you sell, right? It doesn't matter if you sell a million dollars if it costs you a million dollars, a million two hundred thousand dollars, right? In expenses. So I was focused on the wrong thing and it took me so long to figure that out that I'm kind of committed now to making sure that you guys don't make the same mistakes because that's where I get a lot of joy these days is that fortunately, you know, Angela and I are both in the position where we get to teach and get to spend some time giving back and want to help you guys not make the same mistakes. So I blew it a million times and finally I, I did figure it out and got myself out of a hole and wrote a book to make sure that I stuck to it and to help other people. So Angela, tell us all kinds of good things that you did right. Well, the things that I did right is what my parents taught me. Go to college, graduate. I went to UT Knoxville, did my rotations, my internship, did everything I was supposed to do. And a year into it, I realized that I did not want to do that with, the, with my life and my entire future working in healthcare. But something that I did when I started my business was I joined professional networking organizations and started to surround myself with like-minded business people. And then I really learned, again, how to customize the message based on the personality, which all goes back to the communication process. I love that I forgot to unmute myself. Um, so as I'm just having a complete conversation 100% with myself. So sorry about that. Um, I love that your focus is too is on the communication piece because it's something that we, we totally take for granted and you are so good at that. And it makes such a big difference with in terms of, it, you know, you might think like, what does pricing and productivity have to do with communication? Well, it has a lot to do with it because you communicate in different styles with different with different customers. Um, so the things that I did right is, yeah, I, I did graduate from a top school. Um, I, I, I worked on my businesses since, you know, I was 21 years old. I've had three kids. I think that also puts me I had them and I have them, by the way. I'm very um, aware of that since they were have been driving me nuts lately. But the point, I think that it's, I did those things right. It, and the other piece though to remember is that I'm busy just like you guys are. So there, there really is no excuse. Like, I mean, I put them down last night and then I was, I told Angela, the big geek that I am, I was like watching business videos about how to improve my marketing and how to improve my copywriting and all that stuff. And it's because I love what I do, but I want to be better at it. And so you just have to find the time to work on your business, not just in it. And then, you know, writing a book, it helps you get very clear on what it is you do and, and how you want to fix things. So Angela, tell us some of the things that you did wrong, because what I have noticed is that it's so important if people think, oh, these girls, they've got it together and whatever. Well, we do now, but we didn't for a very long time. So tell us about that. Oh gosh, I didn't for a long time, for almost nine years. <laughs> I didn't really have it together until I got a mentor and I got a coach. And for about three years, they kept telling me, you have to track your time. I know that you say you're a planner and you do all these custom things, but if you don't track your time, how do you know that you're making a profit? And I didn't really have a process. I would really, now that I know what I know, I really let the client run me. I didn't really run a strategy or a process or I had a real business, but to me, I've, I'm so, so much more educated now that I've surrounded myself with the right people and I always have a mentor. And I didn't hire the right people. I hired my friends and my family and some of my my friendships were severed because of it because they didn't think the way that I thought and I didn't take the time to communicate with them because I knew that they weren't the right people to be in the service industry in the first place. So having, having the a methodology to use psychologically to make sure that you're hiring the right people for the right job is so important. It's well, it's crucial. And it's one of the things that I still struggle with uh, today and it's, which is why I think it's great. That's why I think it's great that we partnered up because while we're really good and similar things, we both have totally different strengths. 
Um, so I did a lot of things wrong. As I mentioned before, I was really focused on my sales numbers and, you know, thank God I at least wrote down my goals and that's very important because all of you need to be writing down your goals. But the thing is, is that, yeah, great. I wrote them down, but I only wrote my sales goals. I didn't write my profit goals and I didn't have a system of pricing for profit. That's the thing that we're going to really keep drilling down is how to price for profit, how to set your pricing, what all the different pricing things you don't want to forget. Um, the other thing, and I, I mentioned this is because, it's your personal life when you're a business owner, a small business owner affects everything. And so, which I kind of forgot, you know, I seem to think that I, I could have all this stuff going, all this junk going on in my personal life and still run this really successful business. Well, it, it, it definitely distracts you and takes you off your game. So stay focused and marry the right person or don't get married. <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw that in there. Uh, okay, so after doing this for a few years and basically, Angela and I did exactly what you guys do, which is we reinvented the wheel every single time we had a client call us, every time we were pricing a new product, because Angela and I both sell products. I think that's important to note too, is it's, we don't just do consulting. We don't just like, so all of our pricing stuff works, whether it's for products or service. Um, we worked with every client as if it was, it, was, it was a brand new client, which is dumb. You have to have, so I know some people say, well, my, I have to price because uh, you know, all my clients are different and it, they're, it, my work is custom. Let me tell you, there's no more custom work than what Angela and I do, yet we still work off a template and we still work off forms and that's how we're able to make a profit and not go crazy in the process. And you know, in the past we, we did dumb things like we would you know, work with vendors or have meetings with vendors just for the hell of it. And it just is a big waste of time. So we figured this out the hard way and that's why we're super committed to, to teaching you guys. If you will listen that there is an easier way. You just have to follow that like super clear path or what we think is the clear path and the hard way is not having that start to finish system of working with a client, not having a plan. Like I know from the second my clients call me, like what's exactly going to happen right down to the thank you gift that I'm going to send them at the end. So is there some play there? Do I send bigger thank you gifts or smaller thank you gifts or different note on the card? Of course. But I know from the minute they call, what's going to happen start to finish. Um, you can't treat every call like it's totally unique. You cannot just start pricing as if you've, like you're pricing it from scratch. And then most importantly, and, and this is, you know, we, Angela and I take the feedback that we get from you really, really seriously, like whether it's via emails or whether it's via the, the surveys and stuff that you, you fill in when you sign up for the webinars. And one of the things that we keep seeing over and over is that you guys are like, I feel bad. I feel bad about pricing this way. I feel bad about, I mean, you, we got to just stop feeling bad. Number one, just have a system, know how much you need to cover your costs and next focus on other stuff. So the easy way focuses on, um, on a system and it focuses on saving time. And the way to do that is to have a template and a system for everything. And Angela and I, towards the very end, it's almost one of the last things we're going to talk about today. We walk you through start to finish how we handle a client what I call kind of from concept to completion. So from the first time we pick up the phone or get an email from a client to the very end, we, we're going to tell you exactly how we do it now. And um, we're going to give you examples and we're going to tell you how we used to do it so that you can see how far we've come and, and how far really it is possible to come, but you've got to follow a, a path. So we need to make sure to tell you that the results aren't typical, that we are offering you guidance and they're based on our experiences and we're not promising a certain outcome. We are providing you tools uh, that have helped us and we certainly hope they help you, but we're not guaranteeing anything. So for, let's, uh, let's jump into the content. Um, four ways to stop cutting your prices and charge what you're worth. So we, promised you that we would cover some key points in this webinar. So how to turn your competition, competitors' dirty little secrets into money in your pocket, how to spy on the competition and not get caught. And we put that in there because, oh my goodness, how many people talk about their competition and their feedback to us? It was, it's just amazing. Uh, identify the key traits of your specific market to set your pricing and stick to it. So that was the other thing that we noticed was that 
you guys really wanted to know how to price for your particular market and your particular market being like whatever region you're in or whatever like high end or low end market you serve. And then we wanted to show you how to get rid of the obstacles that keep getting you stuck because here's the thing, you will keep getting stuck over and over and over if you don't change certain things, okay? So we're gonna tell you how to do that. And at the end, we're gonna have you, we're gonna help you implement the plan if you want. Okay, here you go. So this is sort of the secret within the secret. We wanted to show you not only what the three dirty little pricing secrets are, but we wanted to show you how you can use those to your advantage, okay? So, and, and, and basically, what does that mean to your advantage? Well, since we're not trying to get revenge here, it's about how to make it work and turn this into money in your pocket. So Angela, why don't you jump in and tell the secrets within the secrets? Well, one of the first things that I hear from potential clients that contact us and reach us are, they're like, oh my gosh, thank you so much for calling me back or emailing me back. And I'm thinking to myself, well, are you reaching out to a lot of people and they're just not responding? And so when I actually meet with them, they'll tell me, oh my gosh, I contacted six people and only two people got back to me and I got an immediate response from you. And so people aren't responding fast enough. And if you're not responding or if you don't have an assistant or an intern or an autoresponder or something letting the potential client know that you've gotten their inquiry, then they're going to move on to the next person. And another thing that I have found is in interviewing, and, and this is all feedback from new potential clients that I'm meeting with, is when they spend 15 or 20 minutes on the phone with people and they're asking them questions. Well, first off, let's be honest, people don't even know what to ask in the first place. Um, but they really don't know what they're talking about. And so when I sit down and I talk to somebody, or even if I talk to them on the phone for a few minutes, I really try to show value and validate that I've been doing this for a long time. I know what I'm talking about and it's worth their time to come and meet with me. And so that's something that I know that there's some new people on this call and I was once new too, but showing that you are interested in asking questions and validating that you are 100% interested in their job and being present. I call it being present. Um, so these people, they're really winging it and they really don't know what they're doing. And so to not wing it, I try to schedule even phone calls. I, I don't like to wing it and I don't like to be caught off guard. So I even try to schedule those 15 to 20 minute phone calls that I call introductory phone calls to make sure that I'm 100% present and listening to their needs. Well, um, I love that. And I'm just uh, pausing one quick thing because we got a message that somebody said um, that he couldn't hear. And so I just want to make sure, see if there's anybody else that's having trouble hearing. If you guys can put that in the chat, if anybody else is having trouble, that would be great because I think we're good so far. Um, Okay, so Angela, let's talk about what we do. Like now what do we do, okay? Because it's one thing to, to know the dirty little secrets, and so we kind of pop them up here, but we wanna talk about now what? Because we don't want people just to say, oh, hey, listen, great, they told us what the secrets were, but I don't have anything actionable to do. So I want you to have something that you can do right when you get off the call. Okay, so we kind of covered this a little bit, but Angela, jump in on this piece about kind of the how-to just a little bit more. So the first thing about responding fast enough is for a long time I've had many mentors mention to me an autoresponder or an automatic way to, to send an email back or send something to the client. I gave pushback and I said, no, everything I do is custom. I, I want to be very custom to clients that contact me, but having some type of autoresponder to let people know that we're engaging them um, has changed so much for me. And We'd even set parameters around the time. So if they're submitting it at 2 a.m., they'll get something at 8.30 a.m. the next morning. But we still need to be super fast. And then you were telling me something about the knot. 
how they had put out a survey about how people are not getting back to potential right. clients. And so well, they're and losing business. So we have, um, so Angela and I both obviously are event planners and we both consult with a million different kind of companies who are, are not event planners. But, but then for those of you who aren't, on this call, um, the Knot is a, basically is a bridal magazine. And what they found was, and I'm gonna get this statistic wrong, but it was something to the effect of 70%, like you, your closing rate is like 70% higher if you get back to the bride within five minutes, okay? And the point of all of this is that a game changer for your business is just to be fast, okay? now. Angela's point about an autoresponder, that's so amazing. And an autoresponder, we have one, like when you fill out our intake form. And by the way, if you guys, if you have a service-based business and you don't have an intake form on your website, you're really missing something. That's an action item you have to do right now. Uh, when you fill out the form and then we say, hey, we'll get back to you within X number of business hours. And it's always like fast amount of time. If you have any questions, call the office or shoot us an email. And here you go. And then what happens is we actually get back to them within that amount of time. Now, the other autoresponder that you can have, those based on your type of business is, so for example, as an event, if you're an event planner, you could shoot them back. Oh, hey, listen, we just sent something to your inbox, your email inbox, check it out. And it's, you know, things about your frequently asked questions or while we're putting our proposal together, or while we're, um, you know, looking over your, your info, hey, let us know. Or, or, or here are some uh, things that you can do in the meantime, right? So we can say, take a look at these menus or why not decide your color story or whatever, whatever would be good for your business. It doesn't matter if you're a travel agent or anything else, there's still some helpful things that your clients can do while you're waiting to get back to them because that counts, remember? That counts as, oh, hey, you started the process, you've gotten back to them and they just need to know there's a live person at the end of it the end of the phone. So, whoops, um, Angela, talk about the piece about, a little bit about they don't know what they're doing either because the, you and I laugh and, and not laugh like ha ha, but it's, it's amazing to us how few people actually know what their cost of goods sold are for their product or their service. And by the way, you have cost of goods sold even if you just, if you think you're a pure service related business but the competition doesn't know what they're doing so how do we teach everybody who listens to these calls how to get one step ahead well the the main thing which I was in everyone else's shoes years ago where I didn't really know I would have a client say hey I have two thousand dollars can you do this where my packages at the time started at thirty five hundred but you know, I would wheel and deal because I wanted to help them and I wanted to plan for them. But after I got a business coach and I was told that I planned, oh, probably about 30 free weddings one year, um, it's really a punch in the stomach. And when I've learned that I didn't keep up with my hours, I didn't keep up with my expenses, I mean, even stopping and buying bottled water and pins and safety pins, all these last minute things for people, I have to invoice for that. And after I added up my expenses in a year's time, I could have paid a part-time person's salary to help me. And so when people now try to call and wheel and deal, you know, I don't do that. I simply educate them and let them know that we, we have a strategy, we run a business. I want to have fun and I want to do this for fun, but it's a business. We have to pay bills. We have to pay staff. We have to pay taxes. I really try to find out what people do for a living or what industry they work in and then I try to relate to them and tell a story so they understand for example if I'm talking to a dentist and I'll say well you have to pay your person to clean others teeth and you have to pay your x-ray person you have to pay for the toothpaste and you know just because I'm a service and I'm a planner I still have overhead as well so I try to educate them on how we spend our time and again really going back to educating them and value and sharing experience so that when they talk to six other people um, who don't know what they're doing, they right. might remember how, how much I tried to educate them. 
got it. Now talk about a bit about like the whole they're winging it thing because sometimes you know people look so great on the outside and they've got this great website and they and they're in a magazine or you know they were featured in a in a blog and everybody's like oh my god they're so successful well heads up you know they're winging it and also the ones that really are in the game in my opinion all have a coach or a mentor and they literally invest in upping their game and Angela, what are your thoughts on what are your thoughts on that whole piece? I mean, I, I remember a quote I heard one time that I think says it so well, which is you can't see the label from inside the jar. I mean, you can't see the problems in your own business like because you're just too close to them. So what are your thoughts on that? Well, absolutely. Even I've worked with mentors that are that work in, in this industry. And then I work with mentors that are outside this industry and they both bring very different perspectives. But what I love is that they aren't married and no pun intended, and, but as close to ideas or, or things that I want to do in my business, they can take a step back and ask the questions and challenge me and say, do you really need to be doing that? I mean, just the other day when we were talking about a class coming up and Marley, you were asking me about numbers and why would we do this or spend this if we can't get a call to action and why we can't do that. And, you know, my brain doesn't think like that on a regular basis. And so always having someone to challenge me and ask me, well, what about this? And what about that? Um, I love that feedback and I love taking it to heart and it makes me a better business leader and it makes me a better person to hate myself so I can go out and help others. Yeah, and I think that's that's crucial. And it's funny that you say that about, well, why would you do that? Why would you? Because to me, it's just, it's it's second nature. And there are a million things to you that are second nature that you and I will talk about. But it it you've got to have somebody to bounce these things off of because if you don't, it's just it, I swear it's a road to madness because then all you do is spend your time chewing the fat over and over in your brain about these things and. And then you convince yourself of a story that might not even be true and it, it just doesn't get you anywhere. So there are a few ways to spy on the competition. Now, there, this is a controversial subject. I will tell you that right out the gate. And I guarantee you every time I say anything about spying on the competition, I will get hate mail or hate tweets or something, but I'm going to tell you anyway how to do it and then use your judgment. And the piece about spying on the competition, that's a sexy way of saying basically market analysis, okay? And if any of you think for five seconds that Coke or Pepsi puts out a product without knowing exactly what the other one is doing, pricing, charging, what part of the market share they have, you are crazy. But as small business owners, for some reason we think we shouldn't know what the rest of you know, our competitors are doing. You have got to know what your competitors are doing. I mean, there are a lot of ways to do that. One is to put a Google alert on your competitors. One is to put, um, uh, you can put Google alert on certain topics that you follow so that you can really stay ahead. Now, if you want to get it, like spy on the competition and use it to your advantage. And I don't think there's, I personally don't think there's anything wrong with this. Um, but again, use your judgment and your own moral compass. As my mom would say, let your conscience be your guide. Now, Alexa.com, for those of you who aren't familiar with Alexa, Alexa is a great way to see how your website ranks and you can sign up for a, a membership and then get an analysis on your website. And I love that because you get a monthly analysis. Now, I just, full disclosure, I have zero connection to Alexa. It makes no difference to me if you use Alexa or anybody else. But when you do something like Alexa, you can check on where your competitors rank uh, with their website or their blog. And you can see where they are um, in, the, in the world. You can see where they are in a particular country, like the US, Canada, or wherever. We, I know um, we have a lot of international people on these calls and so you can see any website but then the cool part about it is you can also with those websites so you can put in your competitors but you can also then see what keywords are driving traffic to their websites 
So then you can, you can do a Google ad around some of those keywords. You can write blog content. You can direct your content. I'm not saying that you put your competitor, I mean, you can do this, but I'm not saying you put your competitor's name into, you know, um, some ad that you're creating. But a lot of times if you, if you put in a, let's say a, a specific name of a company into Google, and if you notice then an ad will come up like with somebody who's competing with them, it's because they bought Google AdWords with that keyword, okay? So what you can do is if your competitor is cleaning your clock in your market, all you do is figure out what are the, the, the keywords, the traffic that's driving business to them. And you can do that via Alexa. Uh, the other thing is it'll also show you holes in your own website and it'll also show you keywords that you could be taking advantage of that people are searching for that you're not. And I think that's like one of the coolest things. Now, the next piece is to shop, be a secret shopper. And Angela, Jump in and tell us what your thoughts on the whole secret shopping controversy is. Well, I'm kind of on the other side of it. I mean, I've never secret shopped only because my competition now that I'm coaching and teaching, I actually have people reach out to me and say, how are you profitable? How are you making money? I'm doing 50, 50 weddings a year. Or 50 events a year and I'm not making any money <laughs> and I'm just paying overhead and there's all these changes in tax laws and um, so I have a very open policy but that's not really standard in my market I don't think um, but I do know what other people charge because people tell me and potential clients tell me and they tell me that why don't you do packages Angela because I've met with five other people and you can't just give me a flat rate or a package and I simply tell them, I do what works for me. Um, maybe that's selfish, but quite frankly, I don't care what other people are doing. I need to know what other people are doing, but I find that out because potential clients tell me. But because I am a single household income and I have 13 people on a payroll, you know, I know how much money I have to bring in, how many events and how many coaching events, how many things we have to do, how much we have to make every month in order to meet those numbers. And so right. if I'm going to take on something that doesn't make any sense to me, you know, I can't flounder back and forth. I have to only work with clients that really appreciate what we offer them. I love that. And then, then jump in about the piece of if you can't feed them, join them. Because this is something, whether it's collaboration, like essentially you and I, people, you know, somebody who didn't know better could say, hey, you and Angela do the same thing. You're both event planners and you both do, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one business consulting and group consulting. Well, we do, but A, we have different strengths, we have different personalities, we connect with different people, we're in different, we have different niches within each space, you know, geography in, in some cases. And the piece is, is that we still give each other a lot of business, but talk about how, how other people can kind of poach that idea. Well, in the collaboration piece, I think in the old model, of being you know competitors and not talking through things I mean we we recently a few months ago where I'm from we had a planner that actually I mean ended her life and her career because she was so depressed she didn't go to anyone and ask for help and it just breaks my heart because I mean most of the people in the town I'm from they know that gosh they could pick up the phone and call 60% of the planners in this town and we would have gladly have helped and so I really try to sell on the collaboration of it's okay to ask for help we're not perfect we've been there we've done that and so why not join together as forces so I, I now have planners that reach out to me and I love it they say oh my gosh like can I borrow your design brain for an hour and can you do a floor plan for me and they pay me for coaching time and they actually come back and ask me for ideas where I don't care if their client knows or doesn't know that they're using me as a coach. I'm still getting paid for my time and I'm helping them grow their business and I'm completely okay with that. Yeah, I love that. Okay, let's, uh, let's jump to secret number three. So this three and four get really, really detailed. So let's make sure everybody has had their cappuccino or if you're in the UK or on another time zone, um, maybe don't have a cappuccino because you might be going to bed. But 
got to pay attention to this part because this is really, 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 really important. And, and this is a, I wrote an article, I think it was for Entrepreneur or Fortune or something about how we build our businesses backwards, right? And, and what I mean by that is we build our businesses based on what we like to do and what we're passionate about and not what the market needs. And in fact, I just saw Barbara Corcoran from Shark Tank talked about that in a, in a different, she mentioned it in a different way, which was, it isn't just based on passion. Like the amazing entrepreneurs, yes, you have to love what you do, but you can fall in love with what you do based on giving the market what they want and fi you know finding a need and filling it. And so Angela, talk about what we mean when we say, what is the market value? Well, for example, if I have a client that comes in and says, um, how much do you cost? I just wanna know how much it costs. And I would say, well, first, let me share with you what I do, our process and our procedures, because they're unique. And I want to make sure that we're a good fit for each other. Where if someone comes in and they, they say, oh, my gosh, I've looked at all your videos and your pictures. And I'm just wowed. I want everything to look amazing and perfect perfect. Well, I already know they value what I do just by their body language and, and their communication to me because they've already done a little bit of homework and they've started to look at the things that we've created for other clients. So I can off the bat know that they value that. Right. And it's just trying to get somebody to pay for something that they don't value. It's, it's just pushing, it's just pushing water uphill. It's one of the most exhausting things you can do and talk about falling out of love with your business. Oh my God, you'll hate your business if you if you do that. Um, but the other thing is you've got to make sure that people have the money for whatever service or product you're providing, right? And I just read this book, um, and it was all about the Ritz in Paris and how it you know was always a luxury hotel and how they catered to this luxurious crowd at the time, you know, when the hotel opened at the, at the at very end of the 1800s. And well, the point is, is that they had people there who could pay their rates and wanted that hotel as a refuge, right? So if you're in a, in a market and let's say that you're a home stager or an interior designer and you're in an area where people aren't making a ton of money or barely scraping by or kids are going to school hungry they're probably not going to have to be paying what you need to support your business right because they don't have the money or they don't if even if they do value it if they don't have the money it doesn't matter and the other piece that you've got to figure out is how many events or widgets and when i say widgets i mean you know Gillette built a huge business on designing a consumable, right? They designed the disposable razor so that you would use the razor and it would not work and you would need to buy more. It's the same thing with candles. Why candles can be a really amazing business, right? Because you burn them. And when you burn them, you need more. And so how many, whether it's candles, razors, et cetera, and you can use the example of Dollar Shave Club, et cetera, does your market consume? And, and how many of you out there are there providing it. So it's kind of like Starbucks, right? Well, if there's one Starbucks in a, you know, an area or one coffee place in an area that's at the size of Manhattan, well, guess what? You're going to sell an awful lot of coffee. But when we joke that there's one on every corner, well, then your differential advantage and your unique selling proposition have to be so amazing. And that's so much harder to do. And one of the things that I, I mentioned, I was listening last night, to some business training stuff that I'm doing myself because I totally believe in coaching and learning and education. And um, he, this guy was talking about how to see, um, basically about, it was about buying ad space and how these days there's no excuse not to have tons of customers because you can take out ads and so segment your market, like even on Facebook. So that was one of the things that I was looking at. So people say, oh, the blah, 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 Facebook is dead. Well, uh, no, it's not. Because you can target people in a particular area, a particular age range, a particular everything, not only based on their disposable income, or excuse me, not only based on their income, but based on their net worth. 
so that you are selling, your ads are showing up and you're only paying for ads in front of people who can afford what you're selling. So that's crucial is you can't just put out your flag and say, hey, this is the business I'm in. It's like, well, great, who cares? Why you have to be better than everybody else? So secret number four. Okay, so let's talk about obstacles. The, here's a list of questions that is exhaustive. I, I'm not exhaustive. It's exhausting <laughs> um, for sure. But let's see, it's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve 10, 12 questions that you have got to ask yourself and continuously be asking yourself in your business. What do you stand for? So Angela, jump in on that one. Like, cause it kind of goes hand in hand with the top three words of, of why you're valuable and, and historically why people work with you. Sort of talk about those. Well, again, if someone is potentially reaching out to me for a potential event and they ask me to mail them a menu of services and they're afraid of technology and they want 30 round tables with everything the same because they, they want to do what's the most cost effective. Well, that's not, I don't stand for any of that. People come to me for ideas, for uniqueness, for brand recognition, making sure I can brand their events so that their guests have this amazing experience that they can't go anywhere else and get because I, I use the psychology part of my background to do all of that. And we're paperless. And so if people are afraid of technology and they're not open to change or open to learn, then unfortunately I, I can't work with them because that would mess up my strategy and that would disrupt our process. And that kind of goes to, you know, what's your recipe? And it's like our recipe, which we're going to also drill down in, in a little bit, is, is, is part of our, remember when I said at the beginning about that you and I each know from concept to completion how a client is going to get handled. We know they're going to call and inquire. They're going to have questions. They're going to do this. We're going to answer them. It's going to take X amount of hours or days to get a contract signed, then this is going to happen, then that's going to happen. And that's the recipe. That's the system that has to be all mapped out. And you've got to keep focusing on why you're uniquely equipped to give them what they want, not what they need. Because remember, what giving people what they need is very different than giving people what they want, right? Angela and I can do webinars all day long about how you need all this legal protection and how you need insurance and you need this and that for your businesses. That's not what you guys, that might be what you need for sure, but it isn't what you want. And so if we didn't give you what you want, which is, hey, we, you keep telling us over and over, how do I, why is my a competition undercut me? How do I get over that, et cetera? So we're giving you what you want, even though we could make a case that you, you need some other things. But you also have to really drill down on what's your overhead, what's your, what's your rent or your mortgage, um, how much is your how much is your internet cost? How much is the ad in a print magazine or, or your Google ads? Or how much does your part time assistant cost? How much does your insurance cost? Because you all have to have insurance. How much does your incorporation cost? Or whatever country you're in, how much does that the the your legal and financial protection cost? And then what are your cost of goods sold? I'm going to beat this drum, I think, until I die. But you have to know exactly, and even if you're just a service business, and I don't mean just, you've got to know how much does it cost you to provide your service. And even if the service is just you, you are your, you still have cost to get sold. And that, whether that's, you know, printing out the proposal or FedExing something to a client or taking the client to schmooze them and get the contract signed, that's still part of your cost to get sold. The other questions you've got to ask are you have to know how much time you spend with a client. We're going to drill down on that in a minute too about in our intake process. And then you've got to know how much time do you want to work for the month, for the year, for the week, and how, for how much money. And then how much annual revenue do you need to support that? So it has to get very specific. You have to say, I want to make, I want to take in $120,000 a year. So that's $10,000 a month. Okay, well, you want to take $10,000 a month, but that goes to what's your overhead. So you can have your business overhead, which is your rent and your insurance and all that. 
And then you can have kind of your, your personal overhead, which is, hey, you need $3,000 a month to pay yourself and the, the kids school and whatever it would be. So you've got to determine exactly how much revenue do you need to take in? What is your overhead, your you know, business and your, your personal overhead? And then how much do you want to put back in the business at the end of the day? So those are the, the key questions that all of us have to, to know about our businesses. Now, here's a piece about how we can help you put it together. So what Angela and I did was we created a little case study. And the reason we did this is because we know people learn best with examples, okay? And so we thought, okay, we're going to give an example of how we used to work with our clients, okay? So I'm going to blow through my example, and then Angela, I want you to elaborate. So in the old days, a client would call my office and I'll, I'll use the event planning example again just to keep that consistent but a client would call my office or they would email and they'd say hi I'm having a party of 50 um, um how much is that gonna cost and then I would start asking them some questions well you know it depends and or you know is it sit down or stations or you know sometimes they would get really frustrated They'd be like well I'm just calling to get prices about you know how much it's gonna cost and so they start getting frustrated and you start getting frustrated or they email you and say, well, just, just email me. You know, they'll, they'll send in an email to your company and ask you for a bid and I'm trying to get a bid on this. And they just want you to email back pricing. Well, you cannot do that. I mean, it, most people can't do that anyway, nor do I recommend you do it because I think you spend a lot of time putting proposals together for people who aren't qualified. And so both of you are frustrated, but they will not be frustrated anymore if you explain to them why you don't you know, why you have the system that you have. And Angela's really great about explaining that process. Now, once you're on the phone, you, so let's say you do take the call and you, you, you get all this detail about their vision and that's based on, as, as we know as planners, we kind of joke Pinterest fantasy land and they have, you know, champagne taste on a beer budget. And then they won't give you a budget and so they just say, well, you know, I don't know. And they're afraid to give you a budget because they think you're just going to spend all their money. But you can't, you don't know what it is. So what do you do? You're like, okay, I want the business so badly. And you research, you design, you brainstorm, you format. This takes hours. And it really does take hours if you actually track it. And I've done it. It's amazing. Researching and putting together vision boards and stuff takes a very long time, especially when you're researching your pricing, if you're not working from a pricing template like the one we now have. And then you send them this beautifully crafted proposal and your design concept. And guess what? They use it. They don't hire you. You never hear from them again. And you keep, you're calling and emailing going, hey, hey, hey. And they've gone dark and dropped you like a hot potato. So then that happens over and over again until you go nuts or you call us and say, hey, listen, why am I not getting any of these jobs? Now, Angela, what was your old process like? Tell us about, tell us your version of, of my, of, of this, how it went. My old process was I had a notebook for every single client that I worked with and um, I used a lot of paper and I would start a budget from scratch every single time. I would start a timeline from scratch every single time before I was introduced to software and templates. And then I started to play around with different softwares and I thought, yeah, this doesn't really fit my needs. So I just came up with my own and <laughs> built my own templates. And now we have a Word document, an Excel document for every single client that lives on Google Drive. So it's free to back it up and I can get anything I need with the click of one app on my phone, as long as my phone's charged. So I carry multiple chargers with me <laughs> everywhere I go. And I, I mean, honestly, I don't even remember what my old way was because it was so not efficient and I couldn't share the information with my team. I couldn't share it with the client. I got hundreds, I mean, we, we still get a lot of email, but a, it's, a lot of that email from clients is cut down because I share documents with them now. And so if they have questions about quotes or any of the design ideas, they can always refer to their Dropbox folder, which now I refer to our Dropbox folder as our binder. So instead of having a binder for each client, we have a folder in Dropbox 
for each client. And we do have a naming mechanism. So there's a rhyme and reason. We just don't have random documents and random folders everywhere because then you're not going to use it. So having the organization and the process in place that's completely paperless, it's just so much more productive. I can share it with the team members and the clients and everybody's usually happy that they have access to it. And I love that. And you, you've got, you jump to the, to the next part, which is, is, I mean, you went from notebooks or binders or sheets of paper, post-it notes, and then guess what? Somebody asks you a question, you've got to go find your notes or your pricing or look back in somebody else's folder to try to price. So now, basically, I mean, you, you talked about your process and this is how ours goes. I mean, client goes to our website, they fill out an intake form that's like eight to 10 questions. I mean, really max. The form is emailed to me automatically. We respond via email, like if the budget isn't there. And that maybe takes two minutes. So if, if then when I say the budget isn't there, we force them to put a budget. So if it's, if there's any possibility at all that the budget will work, great. Uh, then we take it to the next level. But if it's just so clearly like it's under $500 or something, forget it. If it's sort of a match, then you know we're at the fork in the road. We set up a time to chat, and that's like 15 to 20 minutes at the most. Whereas before, I literally, when I talked about spending an hour with the client, I would do all that and I would hear their whole story and what they wanted and whatever. It's like, no, cut to the chase. It's like, it's like going on a date with somebody and your clock is ticking and you want to get married, and they don't even like want to believe in monogamy. You know, I mean, it's just totally not a fit. So you, then you decide if they're a fit. Then send the electronic proposal in the payment link. Right there, that's how that goes. You guys are now contracted. Then it's all the pricing and the proposal. You put in your specific numbers and details. Next, it is that formulaic, even in our hyper, 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 hyper customized um, way of doing things. And then you guys sail off into the sunset and hopefully are friends, not every client is. But the, I think the, the piece that Angela and I really want to keep drilling down on is that, you know, when you fix your pricing, you have disposable income. That means you can work less if you fix your pricing. You can work more if you want and make more. But you have so many options and things that you can do with your money and, and with your time. So hopefully the past hour it hasn't been a totally an hour yet because we're going to still drill down a little bit more. But hopefully you think it's it's been well spent. We, we certainly can't cover everything in, in, in one webinar, even if we had all day. And that's why for those of you who want to get more information or get help, we keep refining sort of how we do this and, and hopefully keep giving you what you want. But I think the, the biggest thing is getting on calls like this and listening and then not doing something different afterwards. And it, this stuff isn't going to fix itself. You're not just going to get off the call and be like, oh, okay, good, I figured it out. You have to have, you either have to have the discipline to get off the call or the webinar and change how you're going to do business later today or tomorrow, or you are just going to be doing the same thing over and over, which is, is exhausting and it will not fix itself. I guess that's all I can both of us can say, and Angela, I love your thing about, you know, when you're talking about being open to change and deciding and, and actually doing something. That's when everything changes is when you make the commitment. So what we, we kind of um, modified a little bit, what we talked about on, on the last webinar, and because it worked really well. Now, I don't know how long we can keep doing this because we sold so many last time. But until Angela cries uncle, haha, um, this is what we've got for you. If you sign up, and again, it's, you've got bonuses, are, they're limited. So if you sign up, you will do a totally intense business evaluation with us. And it's awesome because it's kind of like giving you an insight into your business that A, you didn't even know you needed. And B, the business evaluation alone is awesome because then you can work from that. It talks about your goals, 
It talks about who your ideal client was, who your nightmare clients were. It really drills down on all that. So it gets you thinking. And then you get the link to Angela's calendar and it, we call it therapy. So basically what we do is you get, we, we look over your evaluation and then we figure out, oh my gosh, okay, this is this person's biggest problem. This is why they can't fix their pricing or this is why they're having so much trouble closing deals because we can see the pattern because we've, we've done this for so long. We can see the pattern and the challenges right there in your questionnaire. And by the way, you'll see them too. So it's a, it's a super cool tool for you. So then you have therapy with Angela and the cool thing is you can, you can change what you talk about, but typically what people talk about is like they go over the top three pricing challenges. So when we talk a lot about creating, um, handling objections and things like that, sometimes people have trouble coming up with how to handle their objections or so we can help you with that. Um, we also want to help you set your pricing so that you feel comfortable. And we figured out a way to drill down on that even more. And I'm going to tell you about that in a bonus. Um, we talk about nailing those client objections. Most businesses have three to five client objections. I, I don't even think it's five. I think it's probably three or four where people just keep saying over and over and over. Oh, I've got to talk to my husband or, oh, I've got to, well, it's like how to manage those objections and then appropriately handle the competition. Like Angela is very confident about how to handle the competition and not just handle them, but about how to really address the questions and still close the deal. Cause that's what it's about. It's not just about getting leads. It's about closing the deal. So we know this works because We've both been in Success Magazine and I contribute for Entrepreneur in the Wall Street Journal and Huffington Post. And so we know what we're doing. Um, and you, basically at the end of these calls or in, in life, you've got two options. You can go as cheap as possible and try to figure it out on your own. And probably that has not worked too well. Um, the second option is you've got to put in a little elbow grease. Um, but in exchange, what we do is we literally walk you through hand to hand and hold your hand and say, okay, we took your evaluation. We reviewed your evaluation. Here's where you're getting stuck. And here's where you're going to keep getting stuck. This is the low hanging fruit. Like this is what you need to fix first. You fix that. Then you start making progress, then fix this, then start making progress. And so we both have testimonials and, and a ton of people, especially we should put up some new testimonials because we've had in the last couple of webinars, we've had so many people go through the program that they're now getting amazing results. So now they're like, oh my God, I can't believe it was that easy. And then I struggled with it for so many years, but you can fix it, but you have to take the time to not just keep answering the phone and answering clients, but to actually change your process and actually have a process. So what we're doing this time is if you, for your, you do your business evaluation, then you set up your therapy session with Angela. Angela goes over all of your, your, well, the top things of what she sees in the evaluation, like where you're getting stuck. Of course you can discuss other stuff if you want. And between the business evaluation and therapy session, your total value is $1,394 at least. But then you get my whole pricing workbook, which wow. is this whole 100 page pricing workbook. And you can do as many pricing plans for anything. I've done it for real estate. I've done it for business labs. I've done it for literally everything. And you can download that. That's instant. You get it like right this second. And then price whatever you want, but it literally walks you through. Now that bonus is for the first 20 people only though. So depending on when you listen to this, sometimes people go, Hey, listen, I listened to it afterwards. Well, that's why we want you on the calls because sometimes the bonuses are gone. Usually the bonuses are gone. Now this is the cool thing. This is what I was telling you about. If you guys want this as a bonus, you can take advantage of it. It's only for the first 20 people and you will know you send us your pricing or your proposal and we'll tweak it on the call. So you send us your proposal, whether you're an event planner, whether you're a designer, whether you're whatever you are, 
and you get a second follow-up call for 147 bucks. That's insane because our Angela and my hourly rates are for one-on-one -on -one stuff are really high. The only way you can get this though is if you sign up for the program and then we'll give you an extra hour and you can do your extra hour the same time um, or you can do it as a follow-up whenever you want and it is the cheapest possible way to get a follow-up call. <laughs> Let me tell you, those of you who have paid for our stuff one-on-one -on -one know this. So basically, you've got the business evaluation, the therapy call to do all your toughest challenges, pricing or otherwise. You get my whole pricing workbook and then you get the upgrade option. That total value is $3,188, easily. And our goal is to have you make all of that back and more. So the question at the end of the day is, like if you booked just one client, like because of after talking to us one-on-one, -on -one, and if you can't book one client based on that, then something is really wrong because you're in the wrong business or we are because we give you really actionable items. And if you can imagine how much actionable stuff we give you one-on-one, -on -one, just like we give you here, it's insane. So how much is one client? That's at the end of the day what all this is about. How much is one client worth to you? So if you sell products, it might be a $50 product, but it's not just the $50 product, it's how many $50 products that person is gonna buy or refer to you over or your business over the course of a lifetime. And if it's if you're in the service business, my God, it's even easier because then it's like, what's one client worth to you? So we get paid a ton of money. We only sell our time in packages, thousands and thousands of dollars. We had one of our clients, Nicole, that you saw on the previous example, and she booked, it was like, okay, her goal is to book one new client a month at, and her average is about 1200 bucks. She booked, started booking four a month, 1200 bucks a month for 4,800 bucks a month because she just focused on different things. And she, she presented herself against the competition in a totally different way so that she blew the competition away. So if we sold this to somebody else who's not on these calls or not kind of part of our tribe, easily it'd, it'd be nearly $2,000, but you're on the call and so, the link is theprofitgoddess.com slash get dirty. And I realized, I was kind of thinking it was like get dirty, like get muddy. And I realized um, I'm not really talking about like anything funky, but it sounds funky, theprofitgoddess.com, get dirty. Uh, but it was for dirty little pricing secrets. So go to theprofitgoddess.com slash get dirty. And if somebody would go to that and make sure, if you would tell us in the chat that the link works, that would be amazing since I can't check the link while I'm live with you guys. But it's just 127 bucks. So you make one payment today of $127. And in 30 days, you have an additional payment of $127. That's it. And it is so easy. You just do your intake form, which is your whole detailed questionnaire. You, we review it. You've got all that magic to kind of dissect and be like, oh my God, that's where I was getting stuck. stuck. And um, you get your therapy session and you get your bonuses. But the bonus, remember, is for the first 20 people only. So you go to gettheprofitgoddess.com, excuse me, theprofitgoddess.com forward slash get dirty. So I need somebody to put that in the question area or in the, um, maybe you put it in the chat. We have too many things going on here. So theprofitgoddess.com slash get dirty. And you have options. One is you do nothing and then you get off the call and then we're all gonna be back together on the same call struggling. And the second option is that you pony up the small investment, 127 bucks. And then 30 days your credit card is charged for the second 127 and that's it. Um, but the thing is remember is that we have a total money back guarantee. So if it works, great. If not, just tell her if you want your money back. 30 days, you've got, so I don't know what you have to lose. As far as I'm concerned, it cannot be anything because you can go through the whole thing as long as it's within 30 days. And uh, guess what? You get your money back. So if you want to take advantage of the bonus about getting an extra hour, 
here's the deal. You have to just email us. Oh, we got a note that the link is working. Thank you guys. You just respond when you sign up and say, hey, I want the extra hour and we'll just charge you for the 147 and you'll get your extra hour. Okay, so that's all you have to do. So when you go to the profitgoddess.com forward slash get dirty and you go to sign up, if you want an extra hour, remember the first 20 people only, so you have to tell us. You'll sign up and then you'll get an email confirmation and you just let us know and say, hey, I want to claim my extra hour. But at the end of the day is it's, it's a gamble like everything else, but do you think it's worth gambling you know, a few minutes of your time just at least to check out the link and kind of check out what we're talking about, but really have us live fix your pricing. And don't let the opportunity pass you by because we don't know how long we're going to be doing this because um, it's our one-on-one -on -one time, which is obviously our most valuable time. And we'd love to do it, but Angela and I are getting busy with this stuff, which is great because now we've got people that are having us do whole pricing makeovers of their entire business, which is psychotically exciting. Love that. That's like a half day. That's a whole other story. So two people, one is just like stuck in their head and stressed out. And the other one is like, Hey, I just got help. And look, I fixed it. So go to the profitgoddess.com forward slash get dirty. All you have to do is just check it out. If it's not for you, don't worry. If you don't sign up, it's maybe because you're saying you don't have money or you got to check with your husband or your wife or you don't have time. Let me tell you, you don't have time not to fix this. Um, and if you think you're not good at business or numbers or anything else, it doesn't matter because you still can hire somebody to help you. And that's the key is you hire somebody to help you who knows how to do it. And not only do we know how to do it, we love to do it. So all you have to do is get started now, $127, one additional payment um in 30 days and if you want the bonus hour just let us know in the email and say hey i want the bonus hour you know get it for 147 and then we will set you up with that um and we have a couple quick questions we're going to take because we're over time but somebody says we'll be be getting the slides yes we will be sending you the slides and um so take a look at those and let's see what else anything else angela any other notes on that any other notes on the people with whom we've worked it's kind of been fun after all these webinars then seeing all the like little floods of orders and who comes through and learning about your businesses and angela and i kind of get to dissect and talk about it and that's the cool part that you guys don't realize is when you sign up for the program then we check out your website and you know your links and all that stuff and i'm like oh my god this person this could be amazing they could be doing this they could be doing that and that's kind of free stuff you don't pay for but angela and i are obsessed with you guys so i loved working like i had two calls yesterday with with two ladies they may be on here today but it's just it's so awesome to be able to talk in the same space as somebody and they know how I felt in the past and I know how they're feeling and then to be able to give them guidance and to help and to bounce ideas off of each other. It's been great. I've, I've loved doing it. I know it's, it's, it's like scary how fun we love it. And because we can see so much potential and it's that whole thing of like, you know, not seeing the label from inside the jar. It's people get so stuck and then we are like, well, why don't you just try this? And they're like, why didn't I think of that? And it is, it is simple. Um, but it's because we've got a lot of experience and we can really hone in on the, the problem. And that's why that, that intake process is so detailed. And that's why we encourage you to look at that intake process afterwards and really drill down on like, how did you answer? And when you answered who your favorite client was and why and where that client came from and where can you find more of them? That's when you start developing your business strategy. And that's when you get out of overwhelm. It's very overwhelming if you're listening. Oh, do this, do this, tweet, do Facebook, don't do Facebook, do Google ads. Should I charge a flat rate? Should I charge a, I mean, oh my God, it's overwhelming. Well, that's why you just have somebody look at it and in three seconds can go, oh, dude, here's your problem. Here, fix this and you're done. So we are out of time. Thank you guys. Um, get started remember first 20 people i know we already have orders that are coming in so sorry 
um, there are no longer 20 spots, but go to theprofitgoddess.com forward slash get dirty. And the question I would just ask yourself is if you just get one client, whether you sell one product and get one lifetime client or how much is that worth to you? Hopefully it's worth 127 bucks and then another 127 in 30 days. You've got 30 days to make up the next 127. And it's a money back guarantee if you go through the program and you don't like it. So I don't really see how you can leave. That's it. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for your notes and your tips and your tricks. And we love working with you and can't wait to see who our new coaching batches. Kind of like Easter. You get to see what happens in the Easter eggs. Okay. We'll help the eggs hatch. We're going to help them. It's a good one. Oh my God. Egg hatch. I, love I love that. All right, everybody. Have a great day and have a great week and go rock your business. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.